Hey everybody, it's LA83. We've got another mail day here. So we have had topics in the past talking about kind of like timeliness, talking about the multiplicative impact. Today we're going to talk about seasonality. Just essentially when it comes to a lot of these products, you need to run with a specific amount of lead time. So one of the things we do here at New Future is go and have a travel section. That travel section is kind of on hiatus for just a little bit. I know we just got an email to go to a restaurant in uh, Little Rock area. But simply, what you need to do when it comes to these products is give the publicity members enough in the way of time to make sure your product request is uh, considered. So when you've got something like this, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Which looks like it has a date, a street date of, sorry, uh, August 11th. So still a few weeks out from when I'm recording this video. You're going to have to put in that request in early July, if not earlier. I know that I'm filling out requests now for other movies for our video review section that aren't coming out until October and even later at this point. When you have to contact a uh, member of the press, uh, kind of publicity teams for each of these companies, please consider the fact that they need to go probably up the chain of command. If you are a new YouTube channel, a new Instagram account, there's going to be a few sets of eyes that are on what you do some managers, some individuals that are higher up the food chain than maybe just the street level person that's working product review requests. That time's only going to increase if you have a, a person that is a member of another publicity team. So one we work with is Fleischman Hilliard. So they're going to have to get approval for your request through a member of the actual company. If you have something that is very quick turnaround, your chances of actually getting said product are going to be nil. I can't tell you the number of times that we had a request. We had a trip that we were going out to even two or three weeks uh, in advance that we knew that we were going to go to the Dallas area later on in the month where I would go and try to request a, I don't know, a night at a hotel or to try to go and pitch a few tickets for entries into local museums. And we were just shut down because we were supposed to put in the requests even earlier. Now, if you're somebody that is trying to review I don't know, a major property. So I come from Ohio, Kings Island, Cedar Point. Those are the big amusement park properties. You had to put in the request months and months in advance. So I had luck in the past requesting us the ability to go and uh, have a few media tickets all the way back in, say, February or March when the season for these places wasn't going to be even... Uh, considered by most people attending until, say, May or early June. So keep that in mind that you have to give a lot of lead time. That is one aspect of seasonality that people don't always think about. Another thing that people don't think about are that a lot of these PR firms have a media budget that is for the entire year. So that means that they are given, if you're familiar with lawyers, a retainer of some certain amount of cash. They're given that to go and provide whatever publicity for the company over the course of the entirety of the year. When you are requesting stuff, try to request very early in the year because there will be more funding available. Again, I can't tell you how many times we put into a request like, I don't know, this jovial grain-free pasta company, say in November or December, when we had a little bit more time, our other jobs were kind of slowing up. 
And we were just told, hey, we've already expended our media spend for the year. Try again in the new year. And again, whether you remember to do that, that becomes a lot more difficult because everybody has the holidays. They have other things that they're trying to do. So keep in mind that a media budget might go away. Finally, there is an issue that a lot of people don't consider. Essentially, when it comes to the holiday season, and the holiday season here in the United States, your mileage might vary in other countries, is from, I don't know, probably about November 15th until January 15th. This means that people have reduced schedules at their places of employment. They might go and take holidays. And if it's not the actual publicity contact, it might be individuals that sign off on these requests. That you are going to get a lot less in the way of responses for your product inquiries, your media requests during this time frame. So if you try to put out something for a quarter four, so... I'm going to make an issue of my magazine for December 15th. You need to go in and really start to put in those requests in October, in September, and even August to have enough lead time and to make sure you're going to get that sort of contact for the people you need to get in contact with before everything shuts up for the holiday season. When we were, uh, when I was relying primarily on the magazine for a source of income, it always became a very fallow period, uh, kind of a era in which you weren't making a lot of uh, money. You weren't getting a lot of people contacting you. So you might put in a request here on this uh, Nuputix Health. Uh, hey, I'd like to review your products. You do that at the middle of November thinking, well, I'm still a few weeks before Thanksgiving. I'm still a month and change before uh, the holiday season, I'll get that request put in. Simply put, it does not happen. People are gone. You won't have the opportunity to really get much traction on these things. And again, you might think, well, uh, this means that we just will try this request again in the new year. And based on my observations, that just does not occur. People keep their holiday uh, pay their holiday vacation time going until probably about January 15th. You're not going to get any of your requests put in until then. This actually makes, uh, kind of is held hand in hand with another issue that we, or at least I have seen over the years. I made mention of it previously. A lot of the public relations firms contract out with companies for one year. And this isn't a fiscal year sort of thing. This is January 1st of the year until December 31st of the year. You run into issues that you get a higher than normal uh, fail rate on your requests just because you'll email a publicity firm, a PR firm, and they'll say, hey, we stopped working with them back in the end of December. And some PR firms, say if this company's working a uh, perfect bar, are nice enough to go forth and uh, forward your email to the new press contact or let you know who's working them. There's no guarantee that you will actually get in contact with those people. So do keep that in mind as well, that the seasonality of your request really has a lot of issues uh, for uh, the whole uh, success of your magazine, of your requests, of what you're trying to do for the next little bit of time. So I, like I said, I'm recording this in late July here. I know that when I have got my requests, they're going to do quite well. If I want to, for example, start getting my holiday requests in, excuse me, we will see that a lot of these need to be done for quarter four 
right now to the end of August. If I go too much later, people are already going to get their holiday products. Like if we have some um, games requests for the holiday season, we're going to get an increasingly higher fail rate for our requests the further we get through the year. If we move into the latter part of August, if we move into September, that's just going to be how things are. So you see what we got in terms of the magazine. We got some pasta. I we'll want to try that out from Jovial. We got some DVDs uh, from CBS Paramount. We got some uh, stuff for our health and fitness section from Nuputix, and a little bit of health and fitness section stuff for the Perfect Bar. This was the seasonality uh, lecture discussion, whatever have you. Let's just open up a few other things for the other side of the channel, the uh, baseball card, sports card, unboxing side of things. Here's one of the things we'll be reviewing here in the next week or so. I missed out on this when I first got into the hobby. I wasn't too familiar with the product, but luckily it's still going in a little bit below MSRP, uh, manufacturer suggested retail price. I think it'll be a good video to show where we get 2017, a little dark here, Chronicles from Panini. So if you like your baseball cards, we're going to crack into those. We've got two blaster boxes of that coming on up. That was from the Baseball Cards of Rhode Island seller. They've been really fantastic to us in the past in terms of prices for their products. And then finally, so somewhere around my neck of the woods, I'm going to be speculating on things here. Now, if you watch my videos, you might know that I PC Nolan Ryan. I've got a personal collection of Nolan Ryan cards that go back to when I was, oh, I don't know, about 10 years old. I was luckily, lucky enough to go last time I was at my parents' house and pick up my old book of cards. What I feel right now is that the market is really trying to shunt off a lot of these Project 2020 cards. What Pops puts out every once in a while. So there's been... Slews, uh, a slew of these released, probably over 100 released at this point. And what I saw were that these cards, it's kind of hard to see here, were only about two bucks a piece. Now, if you're buying these cards when they were initially being offered, they were running $20 a piece. And people thought they'd get a quick flip of these packs and ultimately uh, make a ton of money. Now I got, I thought I got five of them this time, but it looks like I might've only bought four. I ended up purchasing about six or seven of these. So Nolan Ryan is obviously a Hall of Famer. One of the best pitchers of all time, has the most uh, no hitters of all time, has the most strikeouts of all time. And the market's pretty low on his cards. He came out in an era where most of his years were overproduced, the junk wax era. You don't have a lot of limited number cards for Nolan Ryan. Of course, you get some signatures in the real high-end top stuff. But for the most part, I think people sleep on Nolan Ryan. He is uh, somebody that... I feel the market will only go up on. So I'm picking these up when it's low and hopefully at some point in the future, I'll have a pretty good position in them. Maybe I'll sell off a few in about 10 years or so. Well, anyways, I don't want this video to be too terribly long. This was talking about seasonality. Get your request in as soon as possible. Give your public relations firms and media contacts a lot of lead time for your requests. Oftentimes, you need at least a month to make sure you've got the highest potential for success. 
And do keep in mind that your success rates will vary based on when you request things. So again, if you get into that zone of November 15th to about January 15th here in the U.S., you're not going to have a lot of success. So try to coordinate things that you can get your public relations contacts to service you before they get out for that holiday break. Just so you have constant streams of material and product to do your stories, your videos, what have you throughout the rest of the year and into the new year. As always, this was Setla38. Hope you have a great time. I'll be back again in another day or so.